Hey everyone, it's Living Dead Gal, and welcome back to another episode of Horse Ranch Rags to Reno. We are right back where we left off. Well, just about. We left off in the last episode with Wynonna and Cass at the nightclub, but they have since returned home. It is, however, 5.30 in the morning, so these two probably need to get to bed soon. They are very, very flirty though, so I kind of want to just see a little bit of like what they do before they head to bed, because surprisingly, they are still, their energy bars are, are decreasing, but they still still have a good bit of energy. So I guess they're just both feeling really energized from the night out. I think Winona's just going to kind of talk to Cass and let him know that she really appreciates him encouraging her to go out despite her kind of being a loner and feeling that sensory overload and that sort of stranger danger. I still think that it has really helped her. She is a self-assured sim, so she's confident to begin with, but that's confidence in herself. And so that's why she's always been okay with being a loner. But now that she wants to kind of open up and have more people in her life, She's trying to also build the confidence in the social skills area, which she kind of has lacked in the past. Also, I hope you guys enjoyed the last episode. I know that one was super long. I just won't go that long this time, I promise. We are going to do some fun stuff today, but we're not going to jam pack as much in. We are going to get into a little bit more of the family backstory, so I'm excited for that. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive right on in with Winona and Cass here. Oh, okay. So one thing I did want to show you guys, she still has the Simmering Rage moodlet, but it goes away in four minutes. And I did take a quick peek when I was just like bringing them home. And it looks like that grudge sentiment is completely gone now. It was taking so long for it to go away, but I think now, I think Winona has kind of completely gotten over her grudge with Cass now that they've kind of established a friendship and potentially something more. When I do pull up the sentiment, it does come up as that they are romantic interests. It's too early to tell, but there could definitely be something there. So we will have to see. Before they just kind of say good night. I think I'm just going to have Cass give Winona a hug. I think it's under physical intimacy. So we're going to do an embrace. So it's not going to be, we're not going to go in with like the flirts or anything like that. We're just going to do a subtle embrace. It's meant to be kind of a friendly hug, but because of how they're both feeling, it feels a little bit more. So let's just see if our girly will actually accept that. I know guys, I know I'm like going at like a glacial pace with this, but as you know, we've got some time. We have some time on this long lifespan to kind of Okay, she immediately went into joking. What was that? I was gonna say we have some time to, you know, expand and grow as far as like family development in the future and romantic interest because we still have a lot of renovating on the ranch to do. So that's why I'm kind of enjoying the slow burn now, but don't worry, it won't be too long. I promise I literally have pages. These are pages of typed notes about uh, what, what I have planned for the next three episodes. So she just went right back into like joking mode. I think that like sobered her up in a weird way. Like she's feeling extra flirty and then Cass kind of gave her that close hug. And I think she kind of instantly was like, wait a minute, like, no, no, I'm not going there. Because again, she's very, very afraid of relationships because of kind of what has happened with her parents. <gasps> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> oh my God. I did not think she was going to do that. I do have an autonomous first kiss mod, but that was a mistletoe kiss. Oh my goodness. I have no words. I have no words. Okay, so they're not going to have like a first kiss sentiment because she just did a mistletoe kiss with him, guys. I'm not going to say it was the first kiss. I'm going to say it was like a light like peck, but he, wait, he got a sentiment with her. Hold on. I didn't tell them to do that. Smitten. Cassador can't explain it, but he's really enamored with Lydona and the sight of her makes his heart beat fast. Faster. Okay, so I was trying to say that she is a little bit afraid of relationships, but maybe she went in there for one little, little mistletoe smooch. I think it wasn't, it wasn't like a passionate first kiss or anything. I'm, we're going to say, here's how we're going to play it. We're going to say that like when he kind of hugged her, she kind of went in and then like stopped herself and it was like a little like peck on the lips, but nothing like more, nothing passionate, no kind of makeout session or anything like that. Oh my, I cannot believe she just did that. Girl, I'm sending you to bed. I'm sending you to bed before you guys can get in any more trouble. Like she was out of her flirty mood and everything. I kind of want to watch what they do, but also they're kind of like messing me up. I don't know. I do have an autonomous first kiss mod, but that was not a first kiss. So I didn't know that they would do that autonomously without having kissed first. She's going to feel real awkward in the morning. So she's not fully sobered up. Get your butt to bed, girl. Get your butt to bed. Hmm. So I'm spoiling my plans. I'm like over here talking about, I want to do a slow burn. And she's like, nope. <laughs> 
Okay, let me send them to bed, you guys, and I'm gonna take care of their needs, and then I will see you all back here in the morning. Okay, guys, so it is the next morning. Winona is just brushing her teeth. I gotta remember to do that now with the Koi Stacy mod. She's just kind of getting ready for the day. She was taking a bubble bath earlier, and <laughs> okay, this is a pet peeve of mine. Um, it's driving me insane. I need to get, I know there has to be a mod to fix it. I know the Sims team has said they've patched it several times, so it doesn't work. They can use this sink, okay? It's available for use with no issues, but for some reason, they will not do the dishes in the sink. They keep going to the bathroom. So Kaz had his breakfast kind of separate from Winona and he went to go do the dishes and he ended up walking in on her taking a bubble bath. So now they both have the privacy moodlet. So she's got privacy invaded. So don't like having someone walk in on them. And he has cannot unsee. You walked in on something you were never meant to see. So it's a little awkward between them because she kind of did that like awkward, weird, not really a first kiss kind of a kiss, but you know, that kind of thing. I think in the light of day now uh, that they're both sober, they don't really know how to act around each other. So Cass is just out here. He's just been doing, since he's in our household, he is doing like all the shearing and milking to help Winona out and just like giving her that uh, for the simoleons. He was up pretty early. I think he now like sees like that Winona's like up and she's gonna be out in her garden soon. So I think he's just gonna take a nap. I think the two of them are kind of avoiding each other because they're both like a little bit awkward, a little bit Bit uncomfortable. Oh, we have more seed packets in here and I should sell these gnomes actually. Next time I'm in build mode, I will do that. Let's go ahead and open all of these. Begonias, summer and fall. Are we still in fall? I think we are. So maybe I'll have her plant some begonias too. Yeah, I really want to have her come out here and take care of her garden because I want to see, let's go ahead and plant these. I want to see if we can actually maybe fertilize the garden a little bit because I want to try doing that with the horse manure. I did actually go ahead and check on the nectar, but none of it is ready yet. So that's going to take a little while before we can sell those for the big bucks. I am going to have her make a little bit more nectar, but I do want her to focus on her garden for a little bit right now. She's in such a good mood. She's very playful from her bubble bath, despite the uh, the little privacy violation that she had going on there. But okay, I'm hoping we can use some of this manure to fertilize the garden. I love that we have all these little farm animals. I do need to work on building we can talk about cotton candy life with the pink one. That's so cute. Wait, okay, she's gotta go do some of that. She's out here whistling in her garden. I freaking love her. I'm so happy that she is finally in like a pretty good place. Oh my God, these horses poop so much. These two are really cute with each other. I think they're like starting to like really get along. I have an idea with that too. Look at them hopping. I could look at this all day. This is so cute. They're so cute. Oh my gosh, they're all like ready for shearing. Okay, Cass, I need your help. What? Where did... Okay, we're shearing an invisible... Where is my... <laughs> Where is... <laughs> what is happening? That was so bizarre. Ooh, we have roses. I'm gonna harvest them. These two have been like running around each other all day and are just not even talking. It's hilarious. I love how they, they just avoid one another. Bad ranch product. Oh no. Ah, see, she gets so upset. I really want to try to fertilize everything because it makes her so like upset. Uh, can I fertilize? I need gardening skill level three. Oh, look at her bonding with silver. That was cute. Why don't you research these plants so that we can try to get your skill up, hon? Because I would really like you to be able to fertilize some of this. Do we have any good quality? We have normal quality and we have outstanding. Look at all that outstanding. Ever since we got Cass here. Oh, I guess he's over here hanging out with the, uh, the animals. He got flirty. Hold on, hold on. Feeling smitten from feeling enamored with someone nearby. Just seeing a sim can set the heart aflutter. Oh my God, I love him. He is just flirty walking around my Dota, but he hasn't like talked to her or anything today, but he's happy as a horse from the horse lover trait. Seeing a horse happy makes Cass happy. They are kindred spirits after all. That's cute. I really, really, really want her to get this gardening skill up because I want to fertilize because I think that would be a ton of fun to see if that actually can help our crops a little bit because unfortunately our garden is making her sad because it's not like good quality of everything that we are producing. The one thing with not having him be a ranch hand anymore and me controlling him is I have to check on all the animals again, which is a little bit frustrating. Maybe eventually we will hire another one. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. I don't even know how many animals I have. One, two, three, four, five. I feel like I have more. I need to like keep a list of them because I'm going to lose track of them. Oh my gosh. Okay. We've gotten our gardening skill up. Amazing. Well done, girly. Okay. Let's fertilize 
fertilize some of our plants. Let's fertilize with the outstanding quality horse manure. I love this. Look at she's whistling. She's so cute. Okay, can we fertilize this one too? Yes. Okay, good. So she only uses one. We're getting there, girly. We are getting there. Yeah, I really do eventually want to build her like a greenhouse. So I do want to get her gardening up. Feeling sheepish from talking to a mini sheep. Oh, these sheep and goats are so fickle sometimes. I swear. Let's go ahead and craft some more nectar. We can still only do the grape, but I need to get her to a nectar making level three. So I'm going to have her come do some nectar right now. So Marissa called by Nona asking about someone else, but she did let us know we're working on our relationship. So thanks for helping us through it. That was kind of fixing the bad relationship between her and Ren, which is um, Umber and Juniper's son. So I don't know what happened with them, but Look, we've kind of like made friends with Marissa, which is awesome. And I will be getting into the townie drama stuff. Uh, probably not in this episode, but maybe in the next one. Oh my gosh, I'm going to need more nectar shelves. We're going to be able to make a small fortune when these actually do age. It's just right now they're only lightly aged. So it's taking quite a while. Okay, I brought a new frog, but it's only a $30 frog because I just can't win. So I'm going to let Winona take a little nap here as well. Cass is just now woken up from his nap, so they can't seem to get on the same schedule together. You know, what? I'm going to have him go ahead and serve up some dinner for them. I want to try some of the new recipes and I'm wondering where I can find them. Are they only available if I have that grill? Huh. Okay. I'm going to have to look into more of the recipes because I do want them to cook some of the new recipes that came with it. For now, he's just going to make some gnocchi for them. Oh, look at Cass in here. Just making food. Okay. I think he might not be as good of a cook as Winona. Well, okay. I mean, he seems to know what he's doing. He hasn't sneezed in the food yet. So I think he's just making dinner for her because he probably wants to talk with her. He's been kind of avoiding her, but he is kind of like realizing now, like just how smitten he is with her. You know, she doesn't have that with him yet. And I think he's just, he kind of wants to figure out like what's going on or at least like clear the air because they haven't really talked at all today. Oh, what's she doing? She's going to go join the cooking actually. Wait, I'm going to let her do that because she wanted to go join the cooking. I'll let her do that if she wants to do that. One thing too, guys, Wydona has kind of been thinking about her mother's journal that Cass gave to her. So I guess she's joining him in. I guess, sorry, I have like way too many thoughts. She was about to join the cooking but okay, now the cooking is done. So why Nona, why don't you grab a serving here? I'm going to let her grab a serving. Sorry, I have to pause it or else I'll never get my words out because like the Sims just do what the Sims will do. So last episode, if you guys remember, Cass did give her this notebook memory keeper, which belonged to her mother. Now, why Nona does want to read it because she does want to know more of like what went down between her mother and her father, as well as Cass's father. But she's a bit torn because she feels like she's sort of violating her mother's privacy and her mother's trust. Even though her mother has passed, she still feels a little uncomfortable reading her like personal and private thoughts. She's hoping like there's more in there since it's a memory keeper. Like she's hoping to find like some photos and maybe some re old recipes and things like that. But she is a little bit worried about reading those journal entries. So she's kind of still torn. So she hasn't actually read it yet, even though she really wants to know more. She has not gone in and opened up this notebook. So also she's been a bit distracted by some of the feelings she's having too. So that's, that's a part of it. I think now she's just going to sit down and have some of this food that Cass cooked for them. And I think Cass kind of wants to talk to her a little bit just about last night, but he's kind of trying to think of a way to broach a subject. Oh, he is a competent cook. Competency in the kitchen has filled him with confidence. Well, maybe not filled. Splashed, let's say. Yes, yeah, splashed. Okay. So maybe he's feeling a little bit confident now that he's cooked them a nice meal. Cass is about to kind of try to broach the subject with Winona, but now she's kind of heard a little noise at the front porch and she's like, wait, let me go check that out real quick. And he's like, okay, great. Well, this is fun. But she has heard something outside and it turns out there was actually a person outside here. I will introduce you guys to her. This is Tara Jensen. Now, Winona's father's name is Jim Jensen or was Jim Jensen. Now, of course, my girly, as I'm storytelling, now has like the green cloud. So she's going to need a breath mint or something. But uh, Tara Jensen is here, guys. And this is someone that Winona is going to have to meet. So I'm going to allow her to have just like a quick introduction. She'd be like, hey, like, you know, um, can I can I help you? She's out here with like a stinky breath and a plate of food. But she is just kind of chatting with this woman who's looking a little bit concerned, uh, a little bit sad 
sad, a little bit uncomfortable. Cass has actually come out here now. And Wynota is just trying to figure out like who this woman is. And it turns out she's like, listen, I'm Tara. I'm actually your aunt. Yes, Tara is Wynota's aunt. She is Jim's sister. Now, let me actually pull up. It's not showing the relationship in their profile panel. I might have to see if I can fix that. It's just showing them as acquaintances. But if I pull up our family tree here, it does actually show us Tara. So Tara Jensen is a best-selling author. That's all we know about her so far. And she is Jim's sister. And I think Cass is kind of figuring out like what the situation is right now. And he's like, okay, this may not be the time for me to, you know, talk to Wynetta about feelings and whatnot, because this looks like it's going to be a little bit heavy. So I think he's kind of like out here just making sure Wynonna is okay. And then I'm going to have him just go take care of some other things. They've got an awkward encounter. Yeah, it's probably just an awkward encounter because, you know, Cass was in the middle of trying to have a romantic dinner with Wynonna. And yeah, we've got this going on. Wynonna has invited Tara in. The two of them are just sitting down to have a chat. Cass went up to the loft because he kind of recognizes like, this is not my place. Like I'll, I'll find time to talk with Wynonna. Nona tomorrow. Unfortunately, their dinner was interrupted, but this is super important. So this is Wynona's aunt, Tara. Wynona has learned from her that she actually lives in San Myshuno. She is an author there. She started as a journalist and then she kind of eventually ended up publishing a lot of books. So now she's a best-selling author. Her and Wynona have a lot of similarities in their personality. I'll kind of reveal more of her traits as we get to know her more, but there's a lot of similarities. And I think that's where Wynona got some of it from, you know, genetically, at least. Like I do believe certain traits can be passed on genetically you know, there is nature and nurture at play. Tara has kind of said, you know, you probably don't remember me. I only got to meet you when you were a small infant. I came here to kind of help with my brother's passing um, at the time. And then I did see in the will that he had left the ranch and everything to you. I knew you were a famous model. I figured you were just going to sell it. And then I kind of heard the news online, like through social like tabloids and gossip that you had moved out to Chestnut Ridge and you'd quit your career. I'm so sorry that I didn't come see you sooner. I just, I wanted to have a relationship with you, but with the breakdown in Odina and Jim's relationship, Odina didn't want Jim in your life ever because of, she she couldn't rely on him. She didn't know if he would come into your life and then leave. Unfortunately, I wasn't really allowed to be a part of your life either. And she's like, I don't fault Odina for that, but that's just how it works. I think Wynona has a lot of questions. She wants to know her family. She's not going to blame Tara for her father's actions. She's not going to have any kind of ill will or like mistrusting of Tara. Tara right off the bat. She's going to be cautious. She's not going to develop like an instant friendly relationship, but she does want to know more. And so I think Wynona is going to ask, well, do you know a little bit about like what happened? How long did my father struggle with alcohol? Tara is going to explain, look, you know, Jim and I grew up on this ranch together. This was our father's ranch. And he had said it was always going to be up to us kids to kind of take it over when he passed on. I always wanted to be a writer. I always wanted to move to the big city, but Jim had met your mother and they had fallen in love and they had you and they were moving out to that little house that Bodaway had rented out to them. My daughter's like, wait, you know Bodaway? And Tara's like, yeah, I knew Bodaway. Like him and Jim were friends from childhood. I think Winona wants to know more about that, but right now she wants to kind of hear about her father. So Tara's going to kind of tell her, look, your father was moving out there. He was happy. So I was going to kind of take over at the branch, but your father always kind of struggled with alcoholism and alcohol addiction. He was really big into the nectar making and that was going great, but he just drank a little too much of what he would make. When he met Odina, he wanted to to change. And especially when they had you, he hadn't had a drop since they had you. And all of a sudden, you know, he came back home one night and he said that he had left you both. And she's like, I don't know what got in his head, but he was somehow just so convinced that he could not have the life he wanted, the happy life with you and your mother. He went right back to drinking and there was nothing any of us could do to help him. We tried to get through to him. He just was so heartbroken over losing you and your mom. And me and my father and mother all tried to kind of explain to him that this was his choice. But for some reason, he just kept saying he was no good for you all. And she's like, I don't know what got in his head, what made him think that way, but he just felt that you all would have a better life without him. It absolutely broke Tara's heart because she wasn't allowed to have any more contact with Winona. Eventually, you know, she tried to do what she could for her brother, but she kind of decided she had to move on with her own life. And so she moved out to San Myshuno while Jim took over the ranch. And the ranch was in great shape at the time that she left. And the last time she saw Jim, Tara was just appalled at the state of the ranch, at the state of, you know, Jim himself. And unfortunately, his habits 
ultimately led him to his downfall and his death. He just didn't take care of his health. And so unfortunately, he passed away relatively young. Winona is sort of consoling Tara for the loss, but also kind of feeling a little bit, she's grieving a little bit herself because I think she's mad. I think she's really mad at how stubborn her father was. Like, where did he get this idea from that he couldn't, you know, be good for them? Like, yes, he struggled with addiction, but that didn't make him a bad person. That didn't make him bad for them. You know, he was working on that struggle. It seemed that his family having that support was helping him. So no one really knows why Jim just all of a sudden decided that he wasn't good enough for Odina and good enough to be a father, but he did. So that is kind of the backstory that Tara has kind of given to Winona. So as they've kind of been talking, it's a lot of a bombshell dropped on Winona, but uh, you know, they talked a lot about the family life. Unfortunately, Tara, again, she doesn't really know the root of what caused Jim to kind of want to leave his family or to think he wasn't good enough. She just knows that he reached a point where no one could help him and she feels guilty, but she had to kind of go live her own life. And I think Winona understands that. And her and her aunt, she found that they have a lot in common and she kind of respects that. And they actually have just now gotten, the two of them have just been catching up and talking. And it's been nice for Winona to just know some family. So yes, she has a lot of questions. Yes, she is. She wants a lot she wants to know, but she's also just happy to know that she does have another family member left in this world. And this is someone she can build a relationship with. Of course, she's going to be cautious, but she's still excited to have to have somebody. And so they actually have gotten the new family dynamic of jokesters. Cue the punchline, Wynonna and Tara just can't stop cracking each other up, which is amazing considering they're talking about such like, you know, difficult subjects. But I think the two of them have kind of found a way to find humor with one another just because they're so similar and they understand each other in light of everything horrible that, you know, they've had to discuss tonight. It's always a hoot when these two are in the same room. Family members with the jokesters family dynamics will choose to perform funny or mischief interactions with each other more often and they'll feel extra playful when spending time together. Would you describe the family dynamic between Winona and Tara as being jokesters? Um, yes, sure. So these two have been talking for quite a while. I think Winona is just going to hug her aunt goodbye. Her aunt is actually staying with a friend in Chestnut Ridge. Now, Winona did offer to um, allow her aunt to stay here, but her aunt is staying with a friend. She says, I have some, some things I need to kind of settle with that friend, but I'd definitely love to come visit you while I'm here and we should definitely keep in touch when I move back to San Maichino. So Winona does have some family guys now and they've just become good friends, which is awesome. So Tara is going to head back home. Winona is going to go to bed. Cass is kind of up in the loft. He's fallen asleep. Winona is exhausted. So I'm going to put her to bed and I'll see you guys here in the morning as we kind of reflect on that. So it is the next morning and our queen is just making herself a nice little drink. I think I am having her make a latte, but she is feeling tense. The ranch needs me. She can't help but feel like the ranch is falling apart. So she's still unhappy about like where she's at progress wise because she's looking for, she's looking to have made more money and it's been a while since she's actually made some money. While she's done a lot of renovations, she hasn't really been able to do like quite as many as she would have liked. Like she still has so much more work to do and so much more to actually get the ranch to be up and running and then finally turn like a real profit off of it. Stressing her out how long it takes for the nectar bottles to like fully age. So she's feeling a little bit tense. So I think Cass is, oh, he's actually coming in here. It's unusually hot for winter. We are actually experiencing a heat wave. Um, I may have had something to do with that. I think he is going to chat with Winona because he does want to kind of propose an idea to her. And he does actually want to be friendly with Winona from being loyal. And he wants to stay outside for eight hours, which is actually perfect for the idea that he's going to propose to Cass, <laughs> that he's going to propose to her. Cass has kind of decided, he's like, I need to spend some more time with her to figure out how to broach the subject of my feelings. But he also knows she's dealing with a lot of heavy stuff right now. She is seemingly happy from talking with her aunt. So the two of them are just kind of chatting and he's just like seeing how it went. She's happy about that, but she's letting him know that she's really, really stressed about the state of the ranch and she wants to do more. And she's like, you know, this nectar is taking so long to age. Like I wish I need to like go like chop more prairie grass up or something to see what else I can find there so that we can make some money fast. And I think Cass is going to suggest, he's like, look, I actually have an idea. 
we're experiencing an unusual heat wave right now for winter. I know it's been hard for us to go out and harvest some prairie grass, but let's just go, you know, on a little overnight trip on the trails. We can pack some sleeping bags. It'll give you some time with the horses. I can help you with some like horse training and competition stuff. And we can harvest some more of the prairie grass. We can kind of dig through that and see what we can find. Okay. She just did something flirty with him. They just got a flirty interaction. She just did something flirty. I don't know what it was guys, but either way, Wydona has told him, yes, they are going on like a little trip. I think she's a little bit hesitant about it because she's like, well, the ranch needs me. He's like, we'll bring all the animals. It'll be fine. Um, Because apparently in Sims, we can just do that. We can just pop them in our inventory. So we are going to take a little trip because this is something I have been wanting to do ever since I saw the live stream. I have wanted to have like my Sims go sleep under the stars. So there's nothing like ill intention here. There's no funny business. Cass isn't trying to like get with her on this trip. Like, yes, he wants to sort out his feelings and everything, but this is purely like because he wants to spend time with her. There's nothing more than that. And he also does know it'll be really, really helpful for them to gather some of the resources they need. So he's like, okay, I'm going to fuel up. And I think I'm actually going to have her pack some lunches for them. Maybe it would be better if I just give them, if I have her put like the cooler in her inventory. Can I even do that? Oh, and actually while I'm here, I can sell these evil little gnomes. Yes. Look at that. $310 each. Okay. There we go. We're getting some money. I do want to do more renovations, but I do want her to be kind of comfortable financially uh, before we do that. So let me just pop this out, this old cooler. We'll just have her do that. I wonder, can I store lunches in a cooler? Hang on. I wonder if she can do that. Okay. We have some more of their ham dinner left. Let me see if she can, can she pack these into a sack lunch? That way they'll have some food for the trail. Okay. It doesn't work. Ah, I need my mod that like makes coolers actually work as like a storing function. Oh, that sucks. Again, she still doesn't want to read her mother's journal yet. She's still kind of debating. Now she is like, okay, this will be a good distraction. Instead of stressing about what she's learned, she's stressing about the ranch. And so while she's happy to have a family member and she does want to know more, it's a lot for her to process. So she started to kind of spiral and stress out about the ranch. And so Cass's idea for them to just go on a little outdoor trip because she kind of needs some time in the outdoor that's what calms her down. It's kind of, it's sounding like a really good idea for her. And I did want to show you guys, she did actually learn a lot about her Aunt Tara. So they have a lot in common. Aunt Tara is ambitious, which Winona was ambitious until I gave her the ranger trait, but she's still, that's like a part of her. I just kind of swapped out the traits for the dynamics of the game. Winona is ambitious as far as ranch life now, and Tara is ambitious as far as like her career. She's a cat lover. She's an overachiever. She's a bookworm and she's a loner like Winona. So I think that's kind of where Winona gets it from. She's a an author at Walrus Books and they are now good friends and jokesters. They have amazing compatibility. She is her aunt. I was able to fix that relationship. So that is there. And Tara has the adoring sentiment about Winona. She just wants the best for Winona and thinks she is so wonderful. So I'm really happy that Winona has a little bit of family now. So I think she's happy for that, but she's still also processing, like trying to understand why her father, you know, like what got into his head that made him think he wasn't good enough for them. And that is something that she is going to want to figure out. Cass is is feeling flirty. He's feeling flirty because he's still feeling smitten. So yeah, he needs to take care of care of that. I'm worried about the animals. So I want her to put them all in her inventory. This may be a mistake. That way I can like pull them out when they go to stop somewhere. I know that sounds absolutely silly. Just go with me here. We're going to caravan with the animals. Okay. So I know it seems silly, but it's, it's, it's gonna work out. It's gonna work out. Let's see how long until the lunches spoil. 23 minutes? Are you serious? Well, the packed lunch is useless then. Why are coolers not actually functional? I mean, I know they can use the cooler like while they're on their trip, but I really wish I could have put the packed lunch in there. Oh, we can evolve our garden. Wait, okay, let's evolve this one. And we can evolve our onion. Oh my God, it went really well actually from the, um, let's harvest the onions too. So our garden's actually doing really well. The horse manure did help evolve. Amazing. So that should put her in a better mood. So let me go into build mode and get the sleeping bags. And I hope I do this right. I think if I put them on their horses and have them travel, it'll work. Um, I don't know though. Cause I don't know if I think I'm going to have them like travel to one of the houses in this area and have them like go on the trails that way. This supports toddlers. Oh, okay. Under the stars bedroll. Want to sleep a night or two under the stars? Experience the night like your ranch animals do. This sleeping bag gives you just enough that you're not sleeping directly on the ground. Can't be much closer to nature if you wanted to. That is what I want. Okay. So I'll just get two of those. 
don't think I can put like a campfire in the inventory, right? I would like to, but I don't think there's any way for me to like do that. I'm gonna see if I can put that in my inventory. <laughs> put this in your inventory, Winona. And then Cass, you can put this one in your inventory. Oh yes, okay, we can. We can put the fire in our inventory. Amazing, okay. So we'll be able to have like a little campfire. That was so cool. All right, why, okay. I'm like, why aren't they moving? I have the game paused like an idiot. Yay, oh my gosh, I'm like so excited to do this. I have, I'm so excited. Okay, so Cass, can you come here and mount your horse? Oh no. Oh no, we forgot one, we forgot one, we forgot little butterscotch. How can we forget butterscotch? No, don't trade. Where, why can't I put butterscotch in the inventory? I put everybody else in there. Okay, I don't know why it's not letting me put butterscotch in the inventory. Oh, we can ask butterscotch for gardening help finally. Okay, do that real quick and then you can mount bandit. Um, I will have to just like call over butterscotch. Don't worry guys, we will get her. We will get her. I don't know why I can put all the other animals in, but not her. A few moments later. Okay, well. I just had an animation error. Everything just like went weird. I thought I was going to lose my save right now. Okay, now we can put butterscotch in our inventory. Something was glitched with butterscotch. I've been getting a lot of animation errors lately. I don't know what is causing that. All right, guys, so this is going to be our big push for money because we're going to have a lot of nectar when we get back and we're going to do a lot uh, on this little trip as far as finding and collecting as much as we can to make money. I'm talking frogs. I'm talking collectibles. I'm talking like anything, anything from the prairie grass. We are going to scour this entire side of the map. I think what I will do is have them travel to an area and then I'm going to like we'll ride with them back home. So we're going to pretend that they spend like the day out riding and then they're going to kind of slowly make their way back home if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and travel. <laughs> we got to call an Uber while on our horses because, you know, Sims. Basically, I want to explore like this entire area. So I think I'm actually going to have them travel like to the Gooseman residence and then we'll kind of ride down this way. So we're here. Well, this will actually give us a chance to peep at this situation. So who are you? Stuart Adcock. You're a team. Okay, so maybe he's actually Katrina's kid or something. Maybe. Oh, he's got a nice horse. Maybe that's what it is. So maybe Katrina doesn't have a new man then because he's a teen. See, yeah, there's actually like tons of places out here. This is like a nice little area to camp. Oh, okay. I genuinely didn't even need to buy a campfire because they're all out here already. I just wasn't sure, but it's fine because we can definitely use that at the ranch. So this is kind of where they're going to be like hanging out is this area, but they're going to kind of spend the day just searching for some prairie grass and stuff. So Cass, why don't you come over here and you can kind of help us with like digging some of the collectibles. And Miss Winona. Oh yeah, we want to go down here and get some of this prairie grass. So you can walk over this way, girly. Gosh, this world is so pretty. Yeah, so this will kind of be the area where they go. So Cass and Winona, they're like, okay, well, let's split up to cover ground and then we'll kind of meet back around this area and just kind of spend the day out here because they both really do enjoy the outdoors. So it might seem crazy because yeah, I could just travel them home but i really wanted to do like a night under the stars with a sleeping bag kind of a thing so let me let me have this guys oh Cass dug up a capsule okay let's open it up unfortunately those are usually just like the little like my sims doll things what do we get yeah oh we got two of them in there poppy and zombie carl okay zombie carl might sell for a good bit i need to let my little goats out because they're unhappy let me just place them all in the world they're not pleased maybe putting them in my inventory was a bad idea but like how do you take an overnight trip with when you have all these animals. They're not happy at all. Oh my God, they all need to like be cleaned. Why is midnight an onion plant? Oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> My sheep has been like invisible. Now apparently Midnight is also an onion plant or is attached to one somehow. We found a striped eggplant frog. I don't, how the heck did I make a dirt surfer frog? I guess, wait, I think I already bred it with a dirt frog, but let me try one more time. Okay, so all I have to do is breed the dirt surfer with the dirt frog, guys. I want this on camera, on recording, so I can remember next time. They've kind of been out riding pretty much all morning. They can sit together, wait. Will he come like sit on the cool? That's just not gonna happen because he's like way too busy. She's like, I'm hungry. <laughs> what? They're all onion plants. Why are they all onion plants? How exciting. A horse age up treat. I don't want an age up treat. Maybe an age down. Oh, who's this? Is that Juniper? I'd like to say hi to her. She's hi. like, no, I'm out. <laughs> yes, we found a strawberry nectar. Wait, let's see what quality it is. It's finally aged already. <gasps> it's already finally aged, guys. Okay, okay, okay. This is money. This is money right here. How are our horses? Oh my God, why is everything an onion plant? We're kind of exploring this part today, which is fine. I don't think there's any. Is there prairie grass over 
over this way that we can like... No. See, I keep getting like fooled. I see stuff and I think it's prairie grass and then it isn't. I already had Cass come up this way and get the collectible. So I think that might be all there is to get. Like there's nothing I can do with this tree right now. I think they'll stay the night like out this way and then they'll kind of make their way up in the morning back to the house. We found a violet. Ooh, we're finding so much stuff. Tara Jensen is calling to chat. Okay, well, we'll talk with her while we're uh, harvesting prairie grass out here. We found another strawberry nectar. I mean, this might be a little OP, but like, Look at everything we're finding here. Oh, we found a blueberry. We were finding so much good stuff. Poor Winona though, she has been at this for hours. I'm gonna put that in your inventory. And then I think Cass is gonna do a little bit of fishing just to see if he can like get anything for them for dinner. Cause he's like, you know, this is like, for collecting stuff, but it's also for fun. You know, they only pack but so many snacks and he's like, well, we'll have fun. We'll like grill some fish up there later. So now she's finally talking to her aunt. We've harvested all the prairie grass. We found so much stuff. We got pomegranates, we got quartz, we got blueberry, we got strawberry nectar, we got horse manure, violet, potato, carrot, arinium, candy, grape, tomato, a lot. Oh no, she's got a pea. Uh, I don't think she can make it to a bush. Is that Agnes Crumplebottom riding on a bus? <laughs> Why is that so funny to me? It just makes me think of um in Wizard of Oz when the the wicked I'm not saying Agnes is like a wicked witch, but it makes me think of that like the wicked witch of the West like <laughs> riding the bike. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was okay. Just had to take that minute there. Winona really needs to pee. So I think she is like, hey, I'm gonna actually head up to the camp with the animals. <laughs> Look at Agnes on the bike. I don't know why that's just so funny to me. Oh, Marissa's calling. Mateo, Markovic, and I just had a blast together. Thank you for your advice. Yeah, Marissa called earlier. It was when I was like taking care of their needs off camera uh, to ask for some advice. So that is good. Trying to take all the animals with us. This is like more difficult than infants sometimes, I swear. No, that's that's not true. That is not true. Oh, what is the matter? You're still an onion plant. I'm so sorry, Midnight. Oh, why not? Yeah, go to the bathroom, hun. Go ahead and use the bathroom. Okay, well, we caught one fish. I'm gonna have him stop now. I keep trying to have Kaz roast his fish, but like, it won't let me. Maybe this one's too small. I don't know. I guess we're just gonna have them roast some hot dogs, maybe? Nope. Oh no, okay, they can't do it at the same time, which is a little bit of a bummer. I don't know what's going on, guys. I keep trying to get them to like sit and like roast stuff together, but it's like not working. I don't know if like the position of like the logs and stuff, because I was trying to have them have dinner, but they can't roast hot dogs or marshmallows or anything. But Wynota and Kaz are just sitting here like 80 feet apart, of course. I know it's not really 80 feet, but they're just sitting here. They're about to try to have some dinner. I might just have to break out either the campfire I like had for them or what. I don't know what's going on and why they can't roast from here. Something is glitching. But anyway, uh, I am going to actually wrap it up here and we will kind of continue with their little overnight trip and get to experience like them in the little sleeping bags under the stars and stuff in the next episode. So I hope you guys did enjoy this one. Um, we are definitely on our way to making a lot of money when we get them back home, but I do have some things that I want them to do and explore along the trail. And I think, I think next episode will be a fun one for all of us. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think about the reveal with uh, Winona's aunt. We'll definitely learn a little bit more in the next couple episodes. We should have a much more full picture of what kind of went down with Jim and Odina, um, but leave your speculations in the comments below what you think maybe caused Jim to think that he wasn't good enough to be a husband and father. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you did enjoy this episode, please just do hit that thumbs up button down below, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!